What's up guys and welcome back to the channel, I'm Andy the Middle Age Gamer and this is the Maruyama SCW9K Pro G Edition Gas Blowback SMG and OMG, grab a drink, take a seat because you're gonna love this Now, what does SCW stand for? Well, SCW stands for Sub Compact Weapon System in 9mm It's the official military designation given to it by the US Army basically upon its adoption and during the testing and development phase. It was selected in 2016 while they were looking through their books, basically, as they were starting to adopt new guns. They had a new pistol on the way that they were sort of like leaning towards a SIG, but it still wasn't known at that time. They were looking at new LMGs, rifles, you name it. But when they were looking at the books, they noticed that the last SMG they adopted was the grease gun. And that's a hole that needs to be filled, as, to be honest with you, full power SBRs for CQB are not really necessary. You know, every weapon has its purpose. And they wanted something in 9mm that be subcompact that can fill multiple roles. Hence, the adoption of this amazing weapon. In the civilian circles, we know it as the APC-9, which stands for Advanced Police Carbine, because it was designed by Brugger and Tomet basically B&T, for that role, for police, law enforcement, as well as civilian. It's a great backpack gun. If you're out trekking in the forest, the semi-auto civilian version of this with the Glock lower is amazing. So with that being said, let's take a look at this amazing piece of kit and do what we always do. We'll start at the rear and work our way forward. Now, I'm going to remove the magazine for now. We will come back to that. So let's start at the rear. At the rear, you have your nice cast aluminum butt plate. It has a great texture and a nice size. It's not too wide, but it's enough to get onto your shoulder and give you a good grip. This is a QD stock, meaning quick deploy. So you would grab on the rear if you pulled out your backpack and you could just yank straight to the rear and it locks itself in the outward position, allowing you to get yourself on target a lot faster. There are three positions, you've got one, two, and three, before the fourth one, which allows it to be completely collapsed, which is here at the back. Now, you can collapse it by pressing this nice large plastic button, but the actual trunnion, the bars, and here are aluminum. The screws that attach everything are steel, including the cross pin for the lower there. Um, and all the little levers and latches are all steel as well, which are brilliant. Now, moving on, we'll get to the grip. The grip was one of the first things they changed with the Pro model. Before it used to be a permanently attached grip, now it's removable. This is just an AR-15 style grip. This one feels very much like an A2 grip, but without that crappy finger shelf there, so you can grab it in any sort of like hand size and it feels good for all. But as I say, because it's removable, if you like your, um, I don't know, your uh, Magpul or what have you, or BCM, just swap it out. The fire controls, as you can see, are very much inspired by uh, H and K with the, how would say, MP5 and G36 in its shape. So this one has a nice extended wing there for your right-hand shooter to be able to just click it into position without having to take his hand off the, how would say, weapon and break line of sight on your enemy, which is great. Now, moving forward, you have your trigger. That's an aluminum trigger here, the blade but all the internals are steel. We'll get to that when we do the uh, breakdown. It is a single stage mil spec trigger. So if we make it lock, you basically have about a millimeter take up to the wall and a millimeter break to pass. And that's another millimeter and a bit to reset before firing again. Again, brilliant trigger, very light and very spammable. Great for airsofters. Now the other pro control, was the bolt hold open and, how to say, release. So if we want, we can use our trigger finger to lock the bolt open before we had to go into the magwell. Your cutout here was reversed and you would have it like on this side and you would basically have to push up and hold it up to lock your bolt open. Well, now you can do it with this or drop it with your trigger finger, which is cool. The magazine release is nice big, but both controls, are protected via this lovely polymer wall around it, as well as here on the, how to say, bolt release and hold open so you don't accidentally catch it or 
break it. I've held this in the a la Chris Vector, and unlike the Vector, I've not dropped the mag once. Whereas the Chris Vector has that extended bit, which allows you to do it. This one's properly designed and well made. Just in case, I did put a foregrip on this, which makes it a lot better. Now, the mag release on the other side is easier to get, and we'll show you that as we flip it around. You do have your removable mock um, ejector, which is there. That's where it would be on the real steel, which is awesome. And here is your trunnion screws, your front cross pin as well for the lower, which is great. As I say, this is just absolutely phenomenal. Moving forward, you have Picatinny rails on the 3, 6, 9 and 12, as you have the big one along the top, that's full metal. The bottom one here is metal, and the left and right ones are basically nylon polymer rails, which are fine, you can remove them or swap them out for any other if you wish. There are others on the market, and that's just great for custom mobility. Now, this gun did come with a extended, how would I say, inner barrel suppressor basically what will boost the FPS. We'll show you that when I do the, uh, the chronograph in a bit. Now this is easily, it's a trilog system, so it's just a quick twist and take off. As you can see, I don't know if I can get that on camera, but if I flip it around, you should be able to see, there it is, the inner barrel. Now that, and no, I'm not pointing out myself, will fit into its inner barrel in there, which is a nice, deeply recessed, it's about here, and that basically mates together and allows it to work. This will, and I'll show it later, um, fit on a MP5. Obviously, it won't boost the MP5's FPS, but it does fit on an MP5, no problem, because it's the same system. If you own one with a threaded tri look here at the front, just remove the end cap and it will fit on it. So that thread protector to be exact and you'll be able to fit it on there and it should be fine. It's a tight fit, but they always are because it's designed to stay on and not be shot off, which can actually happen. So uh, yeah, now obviously another pro control was the ambidextrous folding charging handle. Before they used to be right there uh, as part of the bolt and you would charge it with the bolt. Now we have it on there and it is ambidextrous. So let's flip this thing around. As you can see, I fit mine with a short scout light one of my favorite lights this, so that's why I put it on nearly everything. You've got your ambidextrous magazine release right there, which is, like I say, easily accessible. Your shorter selector and your bolt hold open. So yeah, this is an absolute beautiful piece of kit and something that you'd be proud to own, okay? So, right, now that we've got that scene, let's see if we can put that there. Right, magazine it comes with is a 50 round Glock stick mag, which is great. Very gas efficient on this gun. Of course, you've got all your awesome details there on the back. Let's see if I can get it into focus for you. You've got all your number count, it says up to 30 because the real steel will hold 30. And they've milled out. Now to compare, here is my Glock. 45 from VFC, as you can see, it's the officially licensed one with the proper trades. And as you can see, these are pretty much identical. You've got the same recess cut here at the top, which is what locks it and uh, keeps it stable inside the magwell and stops it from over insertion. And as you can see, they've milled off where the Glock should be. They kind of milled it out. Okay, this is by all intents and purposes is a VFC Glock magazine, 100%. It's not based off of like the TP22, because if I get that one out, you start to see some of the differences. So if I put here, you can see here, this is just straight walled a la Marui, and this one has the V kind of cut. Now, that's kind of cool, and I love that they've done a VSE thing and put it up there at the top, because all modern VSE mags are coming that way these days. But as you can see, that one has a swappable fill valve to the bottom, if you wish, on the TP22 from TTI. But they've taken very much inspiration of VSE, but the TP one is basically just slightly different, whereas this is perfect. So, how about we load this up? and take it out to the range. 
Okay, I'm using green gas and 0.25 gram BBs. This is without the tracer or suppressor unit on there. Okay, so let's add the suppressor and let's see what difference that makes. Okay. So, that's looking around about the 4550 FPS increase with the suppressor. Hmm. Okay, let's step it back to about 15 meters and let's see what this can do in a grouping size. The target you see here is six inches by six inches. So, let's see. First shot got where my point of impact was, and then I rose it up. Yeah, you're talking what? Two inch square? Bloody hell, that is accurate. Okay, so let's take a look at the Texas Star now. Let's see how uh, quickly we can clear this plate and how many BBs it takes. We got there, and we still have just under a third of a mag left. Wow. Okay, bloody hell she's accurate, isn't she? Okay, well before we do that, point of proof before we get into everything. Here is my Marui MP5 NGRS. Here is that suppressor, it just flips over the top and I can just put it in and once it's on, done. There you go, it's on, it works. Release is quite simple like that. Now, if I move this lovely MP5 out of the way. Another cool feature of this gun, like I say, the Maru one comes with this little adapter, so we can just put that on and we can lock it on there, no problem. And now we have a threaded barrel. Obviously there are smaller adapters out there, there are better ones. You can choose what's, uh, I would say, good for you. Now this one obviously is very tight and nice and proper on this. So to get it off, is not an easy task. Now let's do what we always do and drop that mag. As you can see, BBs are out. We'll uh, flip it around, check that chamber. As you can see, there are no BBs in there. So drop that. We'll leave the hammer cocked because we'll need that. Okay. Now, let's break this thing open. So, punch, stay on the back, punch one through, punch two through. Okay, I'll take that off for now. Make sure you pull through on those. And then we just wiggle the, uh, the lower a little bit and it should come off, no problem. The stock just unlocks by pulling down on it and you can take that off. Okay, at this point, we'll take out the recoil and guide rod, pull the bolt to its takedown and drop out 
the bolt retaining pin before launching that to the rear, allowing us to grab hold of the bolt and take this out. I will stick the upper up there for now and we'll focus on the lower. Now, before I get into any more of this, let's do an ADD break. ADD break. Okay, so now that we've done that little break, had to get it out of the way now. Okay, let's take a look at this awesome lower. As you can probably tell, that is a AR-15 hammer in there. It's quite nice. And see a disconnect in there. So that's okay. This little lever here is your hammer release. So as the bolt goes home, it will smack onto that, which will release your hammer in between shot, providing good timing. Okay. Now... Your bolt stop is right there. Just like a pistol, it kind of comes up at the side rather than cross across, but it is very inspired by a UMP, but with modern day modifications to this airsoft replica so that it's more convenient for us to use. Now, the sear here, if I put my finger right on it, this sear here is aluminum. It doesn't need to be steel as it doesn't have an auto sear smacking into it anymore. So it can be aluminum for that. It's just to tell it what mode of fire you want it on. Okay. But the hammer, the hammer sear, the pin, the springs, the other pin for the hammer, this sear here that basically hammer, re how would say release, the bolt stop, the pin that crosses through and holds this part in for the firing pin, the firing pin itself, the front shim here which locks in the front pin all of this is steel which is amazing obviously this piece here that holds the firing pin in place is oh, so the main unit this is aluminum but it's a really good aluminum it wears down very little and that is basically your overstop for a magazine so for instance if i bring up my little vfc mag here goes in, fits perfectly. As you can see, it lifts up the bolt stop because it's ready to go. But as you can see, it fits completely flush. Now, if I pick up a Marui style at the moment and put that in, it will not lock in. It just holds in there from retention, but it won't lock. The reason being, as you can see here, it's not seating correctly right there. That main triangle shape that fits the back of this the official and the BSC mags is what's holding it. So if you are wanting to make this fire with a Maru mag, some modification is going to be needed, or I would hold off and wait until they give you a replacement block here. I've heard they are being made for this, so the block will you can just pop this pin, take out the firing pin um, mechanism, and drop in one that's Maru spec. It's something that was it with the design, but as this is brand new, I came out in the middle of May this year, uh, so it's about a month and a half old. It's not had that much time to get the aftermarket support yet. So right now, I would use it as a VFC, or I would say, or Marui Armour mags, or just basically VFC mags. The benefit is they are available all over the world. In America, they're Elite Force. In the UK, it's under their real name, their VFC. So just use them, and you're where you go, you'll be fine. And yes, if you have a VFC drum mag, um, it will fit and it will feed. So definitely a good idea. So that is your polymer lower. Like I say, it's very much like having a UMP or a SCAR type thing. Very much similar to that for its design. Now, your stock, as I said, is completely metal there apart from the buffer here this is a polymer buffer it's just pinned in you can just pull out the pin and away you go and replace it if needed i have put now a few thousand rounds through it and to be honest with you there really isn't that much wear on it it does its job perfectly it's only a small lightweight bolt so i don't expect too much wear and tear as you can see that's your locking recess here for where the um the back of the guy rod will sit just there 
So yeah, pretty nice, beefy, does its job well. Speaking of the guide rod, it is a two-part steel guide rod, like telescopic style, with a steel spring. And again, does its job awesome. Provides quite a nice kick. Now, the bolt itself is very lightweight. The bolt is an aluminum bolt, um, basically milled out of a piece of aluminum with a standard nozzle in there, which is retained via a Phillips screw right there at the back, LRV EFC, and you have your hex screw just like the MPX and the MCX that holds the front retaining cap to stop this thing from flying out the front. Now, here you'll notice it's a small hex screw. Oh, so it's a cross screw, Phillips, this one, and a hex screw down here. This one is your bolt stop. It's a steel screw going onto a steel part. If it starts to wear, which mine after 3,000 rounds now hasn't, you just unscrew it out and away you go, put a new one in. Job's finished, it's done, it's fixed. Same here with this. This is what bangs the hammer release. That's a small little hex screw. You can use that as you wish, you know, adjusting timing, etc. But um, basically, if that starts to wear out, just swap it out. It's quite simple. Now, out the, I would say just this on its own as is, weighs around about 180 grams. It's very little. This will bring it up to about 200 grams tops. It's very lightweight when you put the bolt release. It's kind of like the heavier bit of it. So anything like that, it's just simple. Very easy to use. Now, let's get on with the actual upper receiver. It is proper metal, full metal, nicely done, milled out, which is quite good. Like I say, your front trunnion with your hop unit is just unscrew six torque screws, three on either side, and then this whole unit can slide out and you can basically take it out of the body and use it to do whatever you want, you know, to upgrade it or what have you. The hop is adjustable right there. I don't know if I can get that light on it. Let's see, yep, that little hole there. It has a little arrow saying clockwise to up, or to add hop, anti-clockwise to take it off. It's a 1.5 millimeter little hole. So you just put an Allen key in there that comes with it. Um, and you can adjust the hop without having to take this entire gun down. It's fully accessible, which is another plus. It's another BSC thing where they don't want you to just constantly keep taking it apart. Now, the booking on this is the VSC Blue, which is probably the best one that they've done. The black one tends to be a little bit fragile, and for the heavier BB loads, like 2.8s, 3.2s, 3.8s, or 3.5s, or whatever it is, you know, that sort of BB weight. Whereas the blue one, it's good for 2.5s to 2.8s to 3.2s, and it'll hop basically your CQB loads, as you would say, with this being a CQB gun. But as you saw, it fires it pretty much laser accurate. This is Marui accuracy, which is a huge praise to this gun out of the box. Now, with that being said, reassembly is quite simple. You can go further if you wish to take out the non-reciprocating charging handles and that. I'm not going to do that in this video. That's too much for, the, for one day's worth of filming, as they say, and for a lot of people to retain that information. If you want to see that, well, I'll probably do it in an upgrade video if I ever do upgrade the inner barrel, which I have no need. So we line that up with the hole facing to the back, move the bolt back to the front to lock it in. We then flip this upside down because it's easier to do it this way. Slide in the recoil guide rod and that, and that locks it to there. Take our rear stop, as you can see, locks into place. Then we take our rear here, Put that on in the right place there. Make sure all pins are aligned. Put that in, lock one and lock two. And now check function, use the shorty mag. Oh, that one, out, use the other one. Let's see, locks the rear. All works, no problem. And there we have it, guys. We have the Marui Army SCW9. Okay, yep. Put that there for you. A little shorty mag in it. 
Um, we have the Maruyama SEW9K. What do you guys think to it? Me, I personally love it. It is laser accurate, it's lightweight. You can wield it with one hand, especially if you're in a predicament like capture the flag or playing any objective-based games, this is really good. And as I go to Halo Mill in Huddersfield in the UK, it's absolutely perfect for that. Running around corners, getting around tight corners, this thing is awesome. And that's basically what it was adopted for as a CQB weapon for the army, the military police uh, over there use them, the Air Force have them under their seats for pilots, you know, for emergency weapon system when they've had to eject, for instance, or crash land in a big AC-130. They're there because, to be honest with you, the whole debate over bigger rifle calibers and all that, every caliber has its place, as I said in the intro. There's a right bullet for the right situation, and 9mm does have its place. And to be honest with you, this is just phenomenal. I've not had to change the inner barrel or the booking because it's just laser accurate out the box. It cycles super fast. You're looking at around about 1,000 rounds a minute, which is really cool if you're needing to use the fun switch. Most of the time you're on semi-auto, but that just gives it such a snappy, very fast cyclic rate in semi-auto so that you can spam the trigger. And like I say, custom ability, as you can see, you can kit it out to whatever you want it to be. And that just makes it really, really good. So I, I don't like giving star ratings, but this is a five star product. If you were to give it a star, this is five out of five. This is bang on the best SMG for the, for the value of money. At 262 pounds from WGCshop.com, um, about 60 pounds for your postage and packaging give or take, and then you've got your UK customs, which it varies, you know, on day to day. So you just gotta run that, as they say. Bringing it up to a great gun. Now, I will address the one elephant I've not mentioned yet, and that is the Archwick version. There is going to be a Archwick variant of this, which will use MP9 mags, they say, but not KWA MP9 mags that everyone's got hundreds of from the old MP9, what this in the real steel was designed to replace. This Archwick version coming, yes, it has BNT Air, not BNT standard, but BNT Air trades on there. And it's called the APC 9K. Runs off proprietary magazines that look like MP9 mags, but they've been angled like a Glock mag so they're not compatible with standard. The internals are run off a highly mod modified proprietary internals for KWA, a la M LM4 style. And so with that, that kind of put me off straight away when you went down a proprietary. And from what I've heard from, I would say, Asia stores and so on, they're looking at it starting to retail around about the 450 pound mark plus shipping and import duties and if that's the case it's going to be overpriced very expensive and proprietary it'll be just like buying a Tokyo Marui for the first time when they get a new release um, trying to track down MWS mags we all remember how difficult that was uh, or AKX magazines how difficult that's been etc at least with this version we've got Glock mags which there are multiple out there. And yes, all right, it's VFC at the moment, but I'm sure with a good modification here and there, which I do not condone, so don't at me with that. But like anything, I'm sure there are ways of making it work. And I know that there are parts in the works from other companies like Lilacs and things like that, and other third party companies that want to mod this to make it even better. So, you know, this is the one that got my attention for that main reason, lack of proprietary and more availability and parts. And being that we all kind of guess by now what the OEM is made for, again, legally reasons I can't actually say in, in my voice, but you all know what it is, <coughs> VSC. But yes, um, but with all that out the way, this is an amazing gun and I, am, I hope that you guys like it and I hope that you all enjoy it, it is absolutely amazing. So, yeah, if you got to this far in the video and you like what you see and you want to see more cool guns, whether they're brand new or some of the old ones that no one's done in a while or unappreciated ones, um, 
and you love airsoft in general and you want to be part of the team then hit that subscribe button like the video share it it really helps the channel if we can get it to grow over a thousand it helps push it out there for other people so that you know it allows me to continue to do this for you and get more cool weapons in which i really want to do you know i'm it's really fun to do these videos for you and i really enjoy it you guys are absolutely amazing as i say at the end of every video you know, you guys are what make this possible, and a huge thank you to you guys. I've been the Middle Age Gamer, you guys have been awesome, and I will see you in the next one.